Howdy YouTube. So this isn't a normal T500. It is a Weber booted T500 with a quad core processor in it. And unfortunately a fan bearing that needs to be replaced. Which I kind of overlooked it. But um, I could probably figure something out to fix that later. And I'm gonna be using this so I can do more proper live streams and but, oh, that fan bearing, it's actually quite terrible. But, was working when I assembled this probably about a week ago. So, I might be able to clean it up, or in worst case, uh, I could probably find a different fan that fit in there. But it does boot up, and it doesn't get too hot at the moment. I did some stress tests on it when it was working fine, and the temps seem relatively cool. But let's see it log in really quick. So yeah, it's just my conventional Debian install. But let me press Alt Enter and type in NeoFetch, so you can see the specs. Oh my god, it does not like getting held vertically. But it has a Q9100, which actually makes it my fastest Weber boot machine. Which I think is pretty cool, actually. So, I'm going to show you how to do the build. Or build notes, at least. And turn it off, and then replace the fan bearing at some point. Probably soon. I hate grinding noises. Okay, so I originally started out with this T500, but it ended up giving me some issues after disassembly. Um, I uh, ended up taking the fan from it though, but uh, it's kind of having like some bearing issues. I was trying to update the EC firmware on this one, but uh, at the time I couldn't find a uh, working battery and the case on this was cracked, so I ended up having to do a full disassembly. And at that point, I just kind of used it for parts and used a different T500 motherboard. Um, the, I think it's the German ThinkPad forums. Uh, I could be wrong, but they do offer some pre-compiled ROMs for Libreboot on the T500. If you're going to compile the ROM yourself, I don't know if it works with the latest version of Libreboot, but it's just like flashing a T400, but if you're compiling it yourself, you gotta set the max CPUs to four. So, from there, um, I got my Aladdin Sunshine out, which is actually quite a nice machine. It allows you to zoom in, uh, get close up pictures, or uh, you can even do some soldering work with it if you turn the autofocus off. But, that's the picture of the CPU socket. You do have to bridge one wire on that. And I think that's about it for the uh, soldering. But it is a little bit hard to solder. But it is a, quite a bit easier than the X200S. The quad core chips generally look uh, glued together in the words of uh, Intel marketing but they work just fine inside the T500. Uh, I haven't had any cooling issues really, um, except the fan started to give out like a day ago, but I don't think that's related to the build. So fortunately though, someone actually gave me instructions how to do this because another important part is clipping pins on the cpu or if you choose drilling holes into the t500 motherboard but q9100s are pretty cheap and i went with just clipping the pins on the cpu i think there's like five of them you have to clip um you can just use a credit card and bend them back and forth or an exacto knife would work and after you got the right pins um, you're pretty much ready for installation. Um, I guess uh, it's also kind of fun to play around with the Aladdin Sunshine, but 
Um, if it wasn't a CRT, I could probably get a little bit better footage of it. It is kind of hard to tell where the uh, pins are clipped on this, so I will be providing the translated PDF. Um, I have to thank someone that uh, wanted to remain anonymous for that translated PDF. Uh, it's going to be on my website uh, if you want to claim credit for it. It was actually really helpful for this build. Uh, Google Translate does a poor job, but it's probably easy to figure out. Um, so the next thing you have to do is um, well, actually install the CPU. And if you click the pins, it's just a normal CPU installation. I still have kind of the old smeared thermal paste on this. But I ended up cleaning that up before I put the heatsink on. So, if you notice, this isn't a T500 with an ATI graphics card. I don't know if it will work with the ATI graphics card. It might be possible. Um, you can embed uh, TFX, uh, I guess, blobs into a core boot uh, file if you are so inclined. But after that, I gave it another test run with the quad-core processor. And as you can see, that's a ATI chip 1 versus the normal one. ATI chip 1 has a extra little chip in it that says ATI. So, whereas the one with just the normal Intel graphics is just missing that chip. And... I put all my screws in a little uh, core boot slash Libre boot cup, soldered the wire down, and began reassembly, which um, I'm kind of going to gloss over because it's pretty similar to the T400. I might say it's a little bit easier, but that might just be because the T400 I got was from me. Well, it actually wasn't mine. Someone bought one from a refurbishing place, and all of the screws were torqued down. But, once it's reassembled, you can pretty much just, uh, you know, put the keyboard in there. It is a T-series, so it has a magnesium chassis. I put 8 gigs of RAM and was a little bit lazy with the wiring. Uh, on every build with a T-model, I always just taped down the mouse. I just use the track point and the touchpad gets in the way. So, I guess the final thing to do is uh, install a hard drive. Um, this one fortunately came with a caddy, so Goodwill a lot of the time likes uh, just throwing out the caddies with the drives. So, I didn't have to order one online for this build. Uh, I mean, after it's reassembled, it's uh, pretty much straightforward. I will say, though, it is kind of a challenge to get the keyboard to go in correctly. Um, it's uh, just a placement thing with the touchpad. Sometimes it overlaps a bit. I also use my conventional installation uh, script for it. And after that, it was uh, ready to boot up. By the way, I updated it for Debian Buster. I probably should change the, uh, or some, is it balls? I don't know, whatever the next version of Debian is. So I probably should update that on, uh, I guess, uh, GitLab, or at least on my website. But uh, weirdly, the keyboard does not work until you get into Linux. So, if you do do this build, I would just kind of uh, either try compiling a newer version of ROM or just, I don't know, set the grub wait time to zero. It's not going to be able to use it anyways. But once it's up and running, it's up and running, works like normal. Except you have uh, four cores instead of two, which is quite nice. Uh, I think the performance is about similar to an X220 in multi-thread. I am not exactly sure. Uh, I did do a little bit of stress testing on it before I had the fan issue. So, it um, 
did seem to not overheat and to tell the truth this is actually the second time I've done a build like this the first time though I ended up uh, dropping it and that unfortunately led to the little solder connection coming loose anyways though um, I guess that's my quick little summary of my uh, T500 build and have a good one.